Hey guys, it's Killzone here, and we're going to be talking about Sony's conference for Gamescom 2014. We're Team PlayStation. I'm Killzone, and I'm joined here with Bunch. Yeah. What's up, guys? <laughs> and uh, one of the things I wanted to kick off this video about was that Sony has shown off the most games of all time during Gamescom conference. Even though it was very brief and uh, kind of short, which kind of sucks because I would like to know more about the games, hear the developers talk about the games. would have been nice just to hear more information overall about all the games and all the content we're looking forward to in the future. Um, another thing I want to jump to is the biggest surprise of Gamescom. And Sponge, I'll, I'll let you start with your biggest surprise for Sony's conference and kind of what stood out for you. Uh, um, the biggest surprise. Yeah. You know, you go first. You go first. Me go first. You go first. Yeah, yeah right. I want to hear you. The biggest surprise for me was the uh, the PT Silent Hills. Um, it, when they showed that and they said it's available now, go play it. Uh, they didn't say it was Silent Hill. It was, pretty just, crazy. It was pretty crazy. It yeah, was pretty crazy. It was just that cool, was like... Um, the way they promoted the game, I think all games need to have their own interactive demo right when they're announced. You can go play something about the game, even though it's not exactly how Silent Hill is going to be. Yeah. Um, just the way they did that and showed off the game and the Fox engine and all that, and then showing the first person who ever figured that PT little um, teaser out and found out it was Silent Hill just blew me away. That was probably the biggest surprise for me was the Silent Hill. Um, other yeah. than that, there's there's a lot of games that stood out for me, and there's a lot of games I've already seen. But that was the biggest surprise for me. What about you? Probably, I'd probably have to say that, too, because really, I mean, really, when you think about it, there wasn't really a whole lot of games that we didn't know about, you know, because we did right. know about a lot of them. Because it was basically just a uh, a re a rehash for E3, but we got more information on certain other games. Um, one 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 that I did like was that uh, one have, uh, one game that I liked, Killed on the, what was it called again? I forgot Hellblade. the name. I think you said you Hellblade. Like, yeah. yeah, 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 Hellblade. Yeah, that one was kind of a big surprise for me. So probably if not the Silent Hill remake or uh, a uh, dead demo, it would probably have to be Hellblade because I did. I thought I was pretty impressed with the uh, trader that I seen. Yeah, because it was very familiar, kind of like the Heavenly Sword style. And, I mean, who yeah. didn't really like that as a PlayStation 3 launch title, pretty much, or, you know, yeah. title around the um, beginning of the PlayStation 3 life cycle? And it's Ninja Theory, too, because Ninja Theory, yeah, I Ninja think, is yeah. very good developer. Yeah, definitely underrated. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll jump to the biggest letdown. And uh, do you want to take this one first, or do you want me to talk first? Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll say this one. Okay. No Uncharted 4 gameplay. Very <laughs> disappointing. Yeah. No, just no, no Uncharted 4 gameplay. Yeah, I think you're right about that. Like, I was, ex I was expecting Uncharted 4 gameplay. You know, this I didn't really think about it the whole time. I guess I was too worried about game announcements. Um, but, yeah, now that you say something, it actually hits me. I'm thinking, like, you know, I expected to at least see something, maybe a shooting scene, um, more, more. Like you know, or at least play. another, tr tr at least another snippet of, like, you know, right. another teaser of, like, oh, wow, you know. Yeah, that's true. Or, um, yeah, maybe another trailer, like, Drake talking again, and, you yeah. know, uh, you know, maybe something that extended the previous uh, teaser that we got, the first little trailer. That would have been cool. Um, that is quite a letdown. I didn't think about that. Um, but I think the overall letdown for me was, like I said, everything being so brief. Yeah, like, it was, wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't like nothing new. Exactly. You know? It just felt like it wasn't anything. It wasn't like any. It wasn't. We didn't get like a new IP, really, like that we didn't know about that announced or anything. We well, didn't I would say that. I mean, they're like the Hellblade and the Silent Hill. Thing. Well, yeah, but like. Um, like a like a huge like you know game out there that stands out right. you know or even like, a sequel to a big title you know yeah yeah but yeah. Uh, I think it was just that all the everything was so brief uh, somebody would come out yeah. and announce something show it real quick and then they really wouldn't talk about it or anything you're just like ah oh, I want to know more yeah. than this um, yeah 
but that was that was our biggest let down let downs and um they definitely had all the games it was just definitely yeah oh, not yeah. enough to talk about um one thing they did show that I want to talk about now is the uh the features coming up in 2.0 which today they announced the oh, themes, yeah. right the what? The the themes? Didn't they announce that today? Well, yeah, that it's going to be yeah, in 2.0 today, which is great. Oh, long overdue, I think. Yeah, I think that should have been there at launch. It should have um, definitely for uh, an operating, you know, the OS and the XMB style okay. they have. You would expect them to have something like hopefully that. Hopefully, they make it. Hopefully, they make it too, where you could be able to put uh, your own wallpapers and stuff. Something would be nice. Yeah, something nice. Nice for that too. So. Yeah, like you said, you you would think they would have something like that already, considering yeah. that it's kind of like yeah. the old X and B style, you know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the way it is. But for me, um, I could actually do without themes. I want more organization. I want to be able to create my own folders, and uh, have yeah. everything organized. Because on my PlayStation Four, I have all the everything games on, in all a straight the line. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> straight line. Yeah, it's like from left to right, I have to like scroll all the way, and then if I want to go up to my trophies and stuff, it's above that. Above it's like the old X and B style. So, um, but Sony, this, Sony, like, listen, listen to us. We want, we we want folders. Yeah, there's a lot of people <laughs> that have said it, but I think more people have requested themes. I think that's yeah. something even before the PlayStation came out. Like, hey, I want themes soon. A theme was a step in the right direction. It's something that that the PS4 needed, you know? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, let's talk about some of the features they um, explained in 2.0. They talked about YouTube coming. Microsoft had a, a, a license deal with them from their launch until uh, previously. You know, Sony announced it during E3, so that is coming. So we can directly upload to YouTube, which is a plus. But to be Richard. honest with you, yeah, I would rather do it through YouTube in general, not through the app. I, you know, I would rather just do it through YouTube. That's me. That's my personal opinion. But it is a nice yeah. touch and convenient. Um, they also had the share feature where you could uh, share play. What you can do is, is you can let your friend okay. uh, play the game for you in a spot. Let's say you can't get past the boss battle. What do you think about that? Is that something you, you would like? Is there a boss battle you get, couldn't get past but a friend did? Yeah, I mean it's good for the people who suck at games, you know. <laughs> you know, they they, they want to progress the story. They want to know what happens, and if you can't do it, if you can't beat it, you know, then why not? It's basically like inviting your f f friends over for your house. Sometimes yeah. I would back in the day, I would have my friend over, and I'd be like, "Hey, I'm stuck on this on on this on this mission on GTA. Can you can you help me beat it for me?" And he would do it, no problem. So instead right. of doing it in your own house, why can't you be able to do it through through the online? I think that's great. Right. You know? I think that's cool that Sony, like not only this share play feature, but the oh, other. Yeah. It's definitely a casual feature, cat feature, but it's it's been on the plus side. It's something that's, you know. Right. Why not, you know? Right. And, uh, like, you know, that's a cool feature, and the LAN controller feature is cool. Like you said, it's kind of like the old days where, hey, let's – um. Let, let's hand the control over to my friend. But the share play is cool, not only for helping someone during a boss battle or something of that nature, but letting your friend play a game they haven't got to experience yet. Now, how cool is that? It's like they can demo the game for themselves for 60 minutes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's cool. Like, uh, I can see myself using that a lot and uh, getting a bunch of messages from friends. I can see getting really bothered by that because can you imagine how many friends like this yeah. is a lot hey man let me Especially check you really good at games. right yeah. and no, and just to mention you have to have playstation plus for these features so it's kind of like the first oh. features besides yeah. online play or you have to have for yeah 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 Definitely. so those are the two features the shared play and then the oh well we didn't talk about the co-op feature um you can do like a couch co-op style um, gameplay. Let's say there's a game that has couch co-op, uh, but it doesn't have online co-op. But that game can yeah. now be online by using the the share co-op feature, which is amazing. Which is amazing. 
Scoop, which is amazing. Like, I think oh, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, that that's a real good. Like, um, there's a lot of games that have come from the past that are um, couch co-op only, but being able to use this feature and uh, play co-op with a friend. Like, um, the first fe- the game to use it is Far Cry 4, and uh, they're going to allow you to let a friend play that game with you without them having the game. Now, that's pretty sick. That's probably one oh, of the yeah. standout things. Um, Very cool. Features I've, seen, I've heard in a while. All right, and we're, we're going to jump over to the um, PlayStation Now and the pricing, and I want to get your opinion on, like, what would you say for, like, a small PSN title would be an, a good price? You can go by a week or a month. Like, what what would you recommend? Um, well... Wait, well, what do you mean, like, uh, for three, for, for seven days, for five yeah, days? Yeah, yeah, let's say, like, a week up to a month. Like, what would you recommend, like, a... a I, think if it's, I think if it's a PSN game or an older game, an uh, older, like, retail game, I think it could be, like, you know, four ninety nine, dollars If it's, like, a newer game, newer game that just came out, I think it can be, like, six ninety nine. Six ninety nine. Yeah. Um, see, they also have a lot of games. Because really, when I went to Blockbuster back in the day in game, when, when I used to rent games back in the day in Blockbuster, that was the price to rent games. You know, six right. ninety nine. So they they should just go from there. You know. You know, they also uh, what a lot of people are complaining about is that it's the third of the month, like what you're paying for to rent the game for a month. That's what they're complaining about more than anything. You can rent the game for a week. Or for four days or something like that for like two ninety nine, which really isn't that bad. But yeah. it's like the oh, like the long period of time rent. It's like thirty dollars, yeah. twenty dollars. That's when it's not, that's when it's not really worth it. Thirty dollars right. because you can buy the game for less than that. You right, know? exactly. Um, but I, I don't know. We'll have to see what they do and it's how they uh, work in progress. For sure, and they said they're not going to completely finish and release it till everything is correct. So that sounds like quality to me. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Yeah. There are some tempting things on there right now for me, but um, I think I'm just going to wait before I really put money into it and try it out for myself. I've tried the beta out when the games are free, and they ran fine with my internet connection. So, um, yeah, it has potential for sure. Now, the last few things I want to talk about is some of the trailers. Um, what did you think about Bloodborne and it being like a, um, a successor to Demon Souls and uh, Dark Souls? Do you think it has potential? Uh, what do you think about it from what you've seen? Absolutely, it has potential. Um, I, I don't really, I didn't really um, like Demon Souls as a game because it's not really my type of game. Right. But, but you know. That game looks like a looks promising and has potential of being great, you know. Yeah, and the, the developers too, you know. Were, yeah, so- were, from our, uh, oh. from software. Yeah, they're they're really good. Um, I think it, I like the creepy style of it and more of like the character and the weapon he uses. It's not like you're this. Dark. It's, it's really dark and evil. Yeah. It's not like that whole oh. I'm a knight. Here's my armor and I got my sword. It's like you're this undeadly character or deadly character, yeah. like kind of gruesome looking. And you got this like switchblade, big knife type thing. Yeah. Like you said, darker and the enemies are, they remind me of a lot of like a resident evil, uh, kind of gr- grungy style. I don't know. That's just the vibe I got from it, but that's just me. Really? Yeah. But, um, another, another way, uh, Really good game that's been talked about for quite some time is the Order eighteen eighty six. Uh, what do you think of that game and, and what they show? Oh, yeah. Um, what do you it's think? Gonna about be, it? It's going to be a great game. It's not going to be. Like, it's going to get criticized for its, you know, um, um, what you call it, not uh, for not being like very open and free roam. But who cares? I mean, every game can't be. Free free roam, you know? Right. So, like, it, it's going to do what it's supposed to do, and it's going to tell a great story, and it's going to be an awesome game. But it's not, it's going to obviously get criticized for right, yeah. it, it, for, for linear, but who cares? 
Yeah, there's a lot of games that are linear, and um, I think if what makes up for it. Open in sandbox. Yeah. I think it's what it's going to make up for that people aren't going to really care too much about the linear um, vibe the game has and the, the space it gives you. Is graphically, there's no cutscenes. It's all gameplay, and the weapons are kind of like Ratchet and Clank, Insomniac, Resistant style. So I think people are going to enjoy that, and the creatures you get to fight, stuff like that. Oh yeah. Um, uh, let's see. And we'll talk about a couple more games here. We'll, we'll talk about Hellblade, and it being a Ninja Theory title and very um, similar to, from what we've seen, anyways, and the kind of vibe everyone gets is uh, Heavenly Sword, and they it looks and, like Kyrie's sister. That's what I told. Yeah, you. it isn't her from what I heard in an interview, but they I are saying it, this is a successor to Heavenly Sword. I thought it was first. Yeah, so did I. <laughs> I was like, holy crap, it's Kyrie's sister. I can't remember but, her name. It was like uh, Kiki or I can't, I don't even know. I'll probably sound stupid trying to think of it. But but um, it looks interesting. If it's anything like Heavenly Sword and it has a fighting style of Devil May Cry, it's going to be insane, insanely good. Oh, yeah. Sure. Um... So I think we're both pretty excited about that title. And uh, Ninja Theory is a little oh, yeah. underrated, in my opinion. I think they deserve a little more respect, honestly. Um, and you said you didn't see much of Until Dawn, but I'm going to talk about it for a second. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think you said it reminds you a little bit of like Heavy Rain style, um, which it has the choice that you get to make and the endings from what I was told um, from the developers and stuff, saying that there's about... A little over a thousand ways the game can end, which sounds insane. But is it like, uh, but is it like uh, one of those games where you um, a cutscene game? Is it or is it actual like gameplay? Where you no, play it, it? it's actual gameplay. Like you can make choices with like um, pushing a button. Like you can go. Let's say you're going to the main part of the story. You're going where you need to go, and all of a sudden you hear something like a pipe ball. And obviously the serial killer is after you and your eight friends. So, like, let's say you hear this noise to your right. It'll ask you, do you want to investigate the noise? Or do you want to continue on to where you need to go? Yeah. So you can immediately change the story right there. You can cause your friend to die or the character you're playing to die and change the whole story. Like, you go investigate the noise. You go to peek around this corner and then just your fucking head gets chopped off. There you go. You know, like, that character is done for. It's going to be neat yeah. to see how that transitions to another character, like what's going to happen after that. Yeah. So um, it's kind of like that. It's a third-person action game. I believe you can probably shoot. I'm sure there's going to be weapons. Your main thing is a flashlight. And this was a PlayStation Move title for PS3 that got canceled. Um, now it's a DualShock yeah. 4 game. And I love that, that, that games that are getting canceled get re, get uh, redone because, you know, I hate seeing games get canceled. It breaks my heart. Right, and I think what they've seen was that the PS4 has this horsepower, and they don't want to make this first-person game where you have this PlayStation Move controller in hand as a flashlight. It seems kind of yeah. boring and dull. So now it's more of a serious, kind of like a horror really movie. They did that because... I hate the PlayStation Move, and I'm glad that they're doing it. Really? You know? I, I think PlayStation Move technology is good. That's why it's in the DualShock 4 controller. So they'll probably add Technology's some features good. in there, you know? The technology is good. Yeah. But uh, they, they, just, they, they just don't support it like they should, okay. you know? Yeah, it's pretty much dead. You're right. Yeah, they'll probably use it with the virtual reality stuff, but that's honestly about it. Oh, hey, hey and I uh, will say another disappointment, but the disappointments. Another thing, I'll go back to what our disappointments. No PlayStation Vita stuff. Oh uh, yeah, a lot stuff. of people were um, pretty upset, but yeah, you know, like like they said that this conference they didn't have enough time to talk about everything. So maybe Tokyo Game Show there will be a lot of things. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. We'll see. But um, overall, Until Dawn looks like a good game. Um, it's like this horror movie cliche, um, but more of a serious um, characters. And it's kind of like the Heavy Rain style, a third-person action game, but yet horror game. I guess we'll see how it works out. But for me, overall, Gamescom was a letdown in some ways. Um, everything was a little brief. And uh, what do you think, SpongeBob? What do you think overall? How did it go for you? 
Uh, I thought it was just a decent uh, 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 expo this week. I just didn't think it was great, but I didn't think it was bad. I just thought it was just okay. Right. Me being a fan of Sony, so, you put that aside. I give it. I give it a. Um, I give it a solid B minus. B minus. Um, yeah, I B-. think me being I'm a Sony fan, but um, all of yeah. that aside, and not being biased. Sony fan, I was kind of away. You know. Yeah, I think that they did. Sony did the best out of all conferences because of variety. Um, but like I said, everything was brief. That was my big disappointment. And like you said, games. Um, but uh, I guess I would have to say, I think it was probably a B, a B for me. So a uh, B minus for you and a B for me. Yeah. But it, it was it was a decent show overall feel around, for sure. Feel around the same, pretty yeah. much. But that's it, guys. Uh, we just wanted to update you on Gamescom 2014 in case you missed anything, and uh, our thoughts and opinions on the show. And uh, we appreciate you for watching and keep keep it here and stay tuned on the HUD for more Gamescom trailers. And more news, and we got the um, Xbox uh, review or um, whatever you would like to call it, opinion on the uh, conference that Microsoft had. We should have that up here this weekend or sometime in the near future, so keep your eye out for that. I'm Killzone, and along with me is... Spongy. Spongy. There you go, Spongy. (laughs) Yeah, we're out, guys, and we appreciate you for listening in. Have a good one.